Halo is probably one of the most exciting series coming to Xbox One X, and while Microsoft weren't ready to show Halo 5 off running on the console, they were able to demo Halo Wars 2 on Xbox One X at Gamescom. And we recently went hands on with the title and got some direct capture. What you're seeing here, taken from the machine outputting 4K. And yes, yeah, straight away I can tell you it's the real deal. We're looking at a native 4K presentation. Of course, there's a good reason why native 4K is so important with a real time strategy game like Halo Wars. Essentially, there's a varied mix of different size units on screen. Now, the bigger elements such as the bases themselves or say a troop dropship carrier. Well, those can appear quite nice running at 1080p even with upscaling. But when it comes to the smaller units, regular troops or things such as Covenant Grunts for example, the extra pixel count allows for not only a more detailed image, but allows us to actually see those elements far more clearly, more precisely if you will. It's kind of the reason why playing Command and Conquer in Windows at 480p VGA was a much better experience compared to the low resolution DOS version. It simply allowed you to better make out what was going on on screen. And that's something that still holds true today with Halo Wars 2 running on Xbox One X, where the move to 4K resolution does indeed improve gameplay through the extra visibility and precision of those smaller units. It certainly makes the game more enjoyable to play on a big screen TV compared to playing on the original Xbox One console on a 1080p screen. So, how does the game fare overall? What's image quality like and how does it perform? Well, before we get stuck in, one thing to remember that it's not entirely clear how complete this build of the game is. And Microsoft could still be optimizing the release under the hood for Xbox One X hardware, but what we did see was very promising. Due to the nature of the game, comparison material is somewhat thin on the ground, but the difference between Xbox One X and the original Xbox One release is obvious. Moving up to the 4K pixel count provides a much clearer, sharper image as you'd expect, but there's actually a fair bit more to that. The most obvious difference comes with the increased resolution of certain alpha transparencies such as grass, foliage and the leaves on trees, which are all clearly defined on the Xbox One X version, whereas on the base Xbox One console, they're quite blurry and lacking in that fine level of detail. And this kind of increase in pixel count benefits all the small elements of the game, from the tiny particle effects to the pockets of rubble dotted around on the ground. It adds for a far more refined presentation, just as you'd expect. Shadows and lighting are also tweaked in this Gamescom build to a degree. Light sources have been moved around in some scenes, resulting in changes to how shadows are cast and how the general environment is illuminated. For example, existing shadows can appear darker and more prominent, and the lighting is more subdued at times. It's kind of an interesting change, but one that I actually think works quite well, having the effect of fleshing out certain sequences with more lifelike detail. This is particularly noticeable here in the opening tutorial, where these tweaks add more depth and atmosphere to this military base. In particular, buildings and vehicles appear to fit more seamlessly into the surrounding environment, and as a result, the visual package feels more cohesive as a whole. Perhaps these changes will be rolled out with an upcoming update to the other versions as well, rather than just as a specific Xbox One only change. And this would kind of make sense as the One X version is an extension of the standard Xbox One code, rather than a completely new version. Of course, it could simply be that in this particular build some of the spotlights are missing, thus causing a dramatic shift in the way the lighting is displayed. Curiously though, in some parts of the Gamescom build, lighting effects such as the headlights cast by the Warthog and other light emitting sources are sometimes absent. That said, as we're looking at what is unfinished code, this is likely to be an unexpected bug rather than anything else, and something that should be fixed when the Xbox One X upgrade finally releases. One area that doesn't fare quite so well though are the cutscenes that lead into each mission. These are presented as pre-recorded FMVs and they look to be the same ones used across the original Xbox One and PC versions. That is to say they are recorded at native 1080p despite using in-engine assets. And that means that they appear visibly blurrier than the actual real-time in-game portion. 
It's a little bit odd considering these sequences are using in-game assets to start with, but really this is more of a minor annoyance than anything else as these scenes don't last for long and only crop up sparingly in between missions. Still, it would be nice to get native 4K movies, which would better fit in with the rest of the presentation. Now obviously one thing you may have noticed is that the game's running at 30 frames per second on Xbox One X. Yeah, it's not really the kind of experience you'd expect to get a 60fps upgrade. Real-time strategy games are typically very demanding on the CPU, having to process the AI and collision for dozens of units on screen. And that's on top of other things that are happening as well, such as physics-based effects and particles. It means that the CPU has to work pretty hard here, so it's understandable that we're looking at a 30fps setup too. And in terms of performance, the setup is pretty similar to what we get on Xbox One. Basically, it's a 30fps target with an adaptive V-Sync in play. So, as the engine goes under load, then some tearing can appear in order to try and keep frame rates running at the desired target and reduce the impact on controller response. And to its credit, the build we played was generally very smooth, hitting 30 frames per second for the majority of the time. Although when there was a lot of particle effects and alpha on screen, then there could be dips down to around the mid-twenties with some tearing. Something that doesn't really occur on the Xbox One, at least in similar scenes in the campaign, where frame rates tend to hover closer to the 30fps mark, delivering a smoother experience with less judder, though it's not perfect. One thing to bear in mind though is this small single player portion isn't as demanding as the stuff we've seen in the multiplayer, where dozens of troops, tons of particle effects and lighting can literally litter the screen, creating an exciting and often explosive experience, and that can lead to more significant frame rate drops on the base Xbox One console. We'll have to wait and see how the One X handles these sequences when we get hold of the final release, but for now it's a promising start. So naturally there's a noticeable upgrade over the base Xbox One console, but what about PC? On the PC we can pair up the game with something like a GTX 1080 Ti and hit native 4K at 60 frames per second while maxing everything out. So we get the highest quality textures and improved quality effects over the base Xbox One version, all of which adds up to a much better experience. Really though, it's the ability to run at 60 frames per second that's the game changer, especially as if you're playing on PC, you're more likely to be using a mouse and keyboard, a setup that really benefits from a high level of controller response, but even using, say, an Xbox One gamepad, also has tangible gains the lower the controller response and the smoother the action. Obviously, Xbox One X isn't doing 60 FPS, but how does it compare in terms of the visual presentation? Comparison points are limited, but from what we've seen so far, we can say that the Xbox One X version holds up nicely against the PC game running fully maxed out. Elements such as texture work, shadow quality, and the effects resolution appear to be a match, and there's definitely a sense that we are getting the high-end experience on Microsoft's new console, at least outside of performance. Naturally, if you want smoother frame rates or some silky 60fps action, then the PC version is definitely the way to go here. Curiously, the PC version is also missing some of the lighting tweaks found on the Xbox One X version at the moment, though these are mostly apparent in the tutorial and once we crack on with the campaign, the visual elements in this area mostly fall into line. And really, the game looks almost identical across both PC and Xbox One X, aside from some of the lighting oddities we're seeing in this Gamescom build, such as a few missing light sources in some scenes or some lighting tweaks in others. Perhaps this is down to the build being unfinished or maybe there's some other changes going on. But ultimately, as we're not looking at final code here, it's likely that any issues will be cleared up in time for release. So overall then, I think that Halo Wars 2 is off to a promising start on Xbox One X. And in terms of delivering the Xbox One experience at native 4K, well, the game certainly ticks off that box. The only thing that could be improved at this point is with regards to performance. It would be nice to get things locked down to a perfect 30 frames per second, or at least ensure that the frame rate drops we're seeing are slightly less severe in less demanding scenes. But ultimately, it's not clear how far along this particular build was, and Creative Assembly have plenty of time to further optimise before Xbox One X finally hits. 
And so with that said, I will think I will leave it there. I hope you enjoyed our look at Halo Wars 2 and if you did don't forget to like and subscribe. Also be sure to check out this video on our Patreon and support us there where you will get the original high quality source files. As ever thanks for watching and I will see you next time.